Hello my garden friends, this is Jersey Shore Lisa from mynjgarden.com and I wanted to do a rain garden update. This rain garden was installed uh, upwards of about three years ago and I haven't done an update in quite a while. So I just wanted to show you how it's going. Now today is May 21st, 2021 and there have been some changes in the rain garden but not many. Uh, these plants are perennial plants. They're native New Jersey plants and uh, they're doing really well and they really established themselves in this spot. Um, the rain garden does catch the runoff from these downspouts. There's one here and then one near the front door. Uh, that water, that runoff during a rain event will cascade down over these rocks uh, and into the depression that's here uh, to catch all that water. Um, you could see some weeds and things are coming up through the rocks. I should probably, I should have probably pulled them out before I made this video, but <laughs> I'm, I, I didn't, this is real life here. This is <laughs> what the garden actually looks like. So let's take a closer look at the plants so you can see what's growing. Over here, this is called Maxima rubecchia. And in the beginning of this season, the this never really completely dies all the way back, even in the winter. This is in the same family as black-eyed Susans. Uh, it's also called great coneflower. And um, this kind of has some leaves, but it really kind of recharges in the spring and it becomes this happy looking plant. Now you have to imagine the fact that it really hasn't rained in over a week here in Ocean County, New Jersey. Uh, and these plants are all looking pretty well, actually. I do not have sprinklers in my yard, though I do water occasionally. Um, they're, they're doing okay, but the, the leaves are a little curling. It could probably use a drink. Um, this will send up flower stalks by midsummer, and the flowers will bloom at about my head level. So uh, because they're kind of in a depression in the ground, the, the, the flowers will be about six feet tall, maybe a little taller than that. Um, and then next to it here, this is balloon flower. Uh, this is not budding yet, and because we're so close to Memorial Day, this is a perennial that I will end up giving a little bit of a haircut this week. I will take the tips off, the growing tips, which will encourage branching, and it'll encourage it to be bushier. That is also a native plant, and they are such showy flowers because the buds themselves look like big hot air balloons, and then they open up to these star-looking flowers. Uh, they can be, depending on the plant, they can be anywhere from white to a light lavender to a deep purple or blue kind of a flower. So they're really pretty flowers. I love them in the rain garden. Uh, these are Solomon seal and they kind of spread slowly. They're not really aggressive. Uh, they, they have tubers underground. Great Solomon seal has edible tubers um, and they are blooming now. They've been blooming for quite a while. So these flowers are pretty much shriveling. They're gonna fall off soon. Uh, the hummingbirds were loving this this year. The hummingbirds were all over it and they would just come around dusk and just sip out of these flowers for, for a really long time while we watched them. Um, just as lovely as a, a, having a feeder in the yard. Um, this here is an American beauty berry and that's leafing out really well. This guy gets really big. It's a fountain shaped shrub and it probably can get to about four or five feet high. Um, I tend to cut it almost all the way back in very late winter. Right down to the ground you can see a couple of the cuts that are down there and I'm letting it regrow because um, when I left it one year and didn't cut it all the way back. The new growth was kind of leggy and strange, very spread out. But when you cut it all the way back and let it regrow, it stays nice and tight and it's very branchy and I like the look of it much better. Um, 
these are strawberries that I've brought in here as a ground cover um, and I'm just kind of letting them run through the bed and look over here we have some ripe ones ready to go I'll let the kids pick those later today um, here's another balloon flower this in the middle here that's gonna be a cone flower it's actually tomato soup cone flower is the variety and it'll be it'll have red flowers in the summer there's another ripe strawberry I see it that down there um, in the center here I gave this a really hard pruning so I'm kind of a little embarrassed for it it's not it's bet it's not at its best but this is a red aronia berry and it's already done blooming the berries are forming there um, and it just looks a little awkward because it was pruned so hard, but by next year, it's really gonna have a lovely shape again. I didn't wanna take it down completely, but it was getting a little tall and too spread out for me um, as far as having a shrub shape. I wanted to kind of keep it um, a little tighter and in a little bit more of a bushy shape because last year I did move this pear tree and this is a grafted pear. It has two varieties on it uh, and it wasn't doing great in more of a shady spot in the yard. This rain garden really is in full sun so um, I thought that this was a perfect spot for this pear tree obviously this pear is not a native to New Jersey but it was just the right place in the yard for this pear and I wanted to give it the best chance uh, to get going and and it really did it bloomed like crazy this year the squirrels took off a lot of the buds but we do have a couple of pears happening and it got transplanted last year. So being that it was in a rain garden, it was well watered throughout the season, really happy in this spot. And I want that to be the tallest part of this garden. So it's not really, well, it is now the tallest part of this garden, but I expect it to get much bigger. Uh, in the next couple of years and then it will really have a graduated height structure to this garden where the pear will be the tallest thing then the the um the red aronia berry and then we come to the beauty that's putting on such a show right now this is called baptisia it's false indigo and this is a native to New Jersey. This gets big and lush, dies all the way back in the winter so that you can't see it at all, um, but comes up reliably every spring with these gorgeous lupine looking flowers. It is in the legume family, a, a perennial legume. So like other legumes, it takes nitrogen out of the air and installs it into nodules Along its roots, it has uh, a symbiotic relationship with bacteria that, um, that stores nitrogen in its roots, and it actually improves the soil around it for the other plants, which is important in this garden because when I dug this garden, I have very sandy soil such that there were no worms in this garden whatsoever when I dug it in. So. Um, I did integrate a little bit of compost when I first dug out the depression and created this berm along the downhill side of this garden, but this legume is a great nitrogen fixer and it's doing its job because boy is it happy. So it must be fertilizing itself using the nitrogen from the air because it's certainly not coming from me. Uh, this down here looks like strawberry leaves, but it's not. This is called Sincafoil, and that's blooming now. Um, there were a couple of others. They've kind of not done real well in this garden. Either that or they're just, they tend to be short-lived perennials, but they certainly didn't spread or self-seed. That one's kind of uh, inching along. I'm not sure how much longer that one is going to last. Uh, they kind of get smaller and smaller every year. Um, and then, in the center there, you can see that patch of a perennial that's um, spread out and really <clears throat> filling in that space. Those are called turtle heads, and turtle heads tend to like wet areas. They like shady areas. So I, I see that it looks a little stressed out from so much sun and from it being so dry, but 
<clears throat> when they get watered and during a typically rainy season, they do really well in the rain garden and they're certainly spreading out fine. So they just need a bit of a drink and they'll perk right back up. <clears throat> there were some other plants in this garden when I first installed it, uh, including another cone flower, another uh, tomato, uh, tomato soup cone flower. That one didn't make it. Um, here's the other foil, not blooming but kind of still hanging on. Um, and then there was, there was also some butterfly weed in this garden and I don't really see that. Oh, there it is. There's some butterfly weed peeking out under there. Um, and there's another stalk of it coming out. So that always kind of comes back, but there was more of it in here and that's just been kind of fussy in this setting. But this is, the, this is the status of the rain garden. The rain garden was initially, I'm going to say this was sponsored by the jerseyyards.org website. That program put on a seminar for home gardeners that um, included three classroom lectures. And as long as you attended the lectures and participated, you did have to apply in order to participate, uh, put in an application. And, and then at the end of those lectures, you received a $150 grant that went toward a soil test as well as plant material to create a Jersey friendly garden in your landscape. And my choice was to create this rain garden and rain gardens are really important because they help to keep the Barnegat Bay clean. Uh, in Ocean County, New Jersey, we're in the Barnegat Bay watershed and Stormwater runoff uh, will take water from rain events, wash off impervious surfaces, and take pollution, pollutants down uh, into the sewer system and out toward the Barnegat Bay. What the what the effort should really be in order to um, stop that from happening is to interrupt the stormwater and to slow it and sink it on your property. Uh, the healthy soil uh, and soil that has, has living microorganisms in it will actually filter out pollutants out of the soil and they will they will clean the storm water and keep that storm water, re recharge groundwater, keep the water from going out into those storm drains and, um, and keep that water on your property. And that's kind of the goal. So rain gardens are a perfect solution for that issue. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about rain gardens in general, um, about my rain garden, about the plants that we've talked about today. Uh, leave me a comment and please, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. That would be great. Uh, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.